Are you ready to become awesomer? Hello, everyone. My name is Umar Hamid. I'm your host on the No Limit Selling Podcast, where industry leaders share their tips, strategy, and advice on how you can become better, stronger, faster. Just before we get started, I've got a question for you. Do you have a negative voice inside your head? We all do, right? I'm going to help you remove that voice in under 30 days guaranteed. Not only remove it, but transform it. So instead of the voice that sabotages you, there's one that propels you to much higher levels of performance and success. There's a link in the show notes. Click on it to find out more. All right, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the No Limit Selling Podcast. Today, we have Caroline Groder here with us today. She's written a book called Gravitas, and I want to know more about it. Welcome to the program. Hi, Umar. Great to be here. So to kick off, why don't you define Gravitas? What does that actually mean? So the simple way to talk about Gravitas is for the Romans, it was a virtue. It was something that a Roman man was expected to have of a certain class, and it means weight, seriousness, dignity. What does it mean to a salesperson? It, mean, it means grounded presence. It means that you are settled and centered in yourself. And it means that you are able to be truly present to others because they trust you. So what's kind of interesting is uh, most people that we know are not there. And by that, I mean that uh, mom comes home from a day at work. She's physically present, but mentally she's checked out the presentation or the mortgage or whatever. And even the dog, family dog can sense there's a disconnect. So that's the world we live in. And uh, so how do we get body centered? Because that's where, I mean, this is the temple we live in. And oftentimes we're not in our body. We are elsewhere. So 30 seconds go. How do we get back into our body? I mean, amen to that. And I, I have been all of those things. And I know when I'm uncentered, the question is simply to notice where you're at. And if you're uncentered and getting through loads of stuff, that's okay. If you've got a big pitch or a big sales meeting or something important with your family, catch the state. Notice that you're in your head, there's lots of noisy thoughts and just take a moment to come back to what your breathing is up to. Self-awareness of the breath. Notice what your knees are up to, are they locked? Notice what your feet are doing, are they relaxed, are they clenched? My knees are always up to no good, but I agree. I think uh, being fully present. So I often tell uh, my clients that, you know, your mind will lie to you. Yes. And the reason for it lying, uh, there's a bunch of reasons, but one of them is there's just so much processing power. When you're with someone, it doesn't require all that attention. So you can think about the other million things, which the other person can feel. But if you step into your body and you're fully present for someone, that is literally an important gift you can give to another human being. It changes when, everything. Yeah. And they notice it. Like one of the things I hear from a lot of people that uh, finally quit is like, damn you, boss, I am leaving. And then they do the exit interview. And one of the things you hear often is oftentimes I'd be with my manager who were physically present, but she was checked out. Yes. Like I, didn't, I wasn't attended to. I felt disconnected. And one of the things that's really interesting to me is, is that as you become more aware, you become aware when you're not connected. Yes. But sometimes it takes a spouse to go, hello. And so how, what tips would you give someone to be more mindful when they're not in their body? Like what would be a sign that they could use to just auto correct? So after a while, they spend more time here in their body than they do in their thoughts. Do you know what the big tell for me was? Because I am the teacher who teaches what she needs. I teach something that I wasn't very good at when I started out. And the thing that people used to say to me that was the tell that I was busy in my head was, have I said this before? So that's what you would say? Well, that's what they would say to me. And, and what that told me is it looked as if I had switched off. Yeah. Because they were picking up in my field that I wasn't fully engaged. And, and that happened a lot. And I, it'll be di a different phrase for your audience. Something else might be happening. But if you notice that someone you're talking to doesn't feel heard, that they're getting twitchy or that you're losing engagement, start to notice what your impact is on that feedback loop. Absolutely. This, 
one of the things that drives me crazy on this technology, which is freaking amazing, because I'm here in Toronto, Canada, and you're in jolly old England, Love and we're having this conversation. But the problem is this, is that we're hot wired to look at faces, and I want to do that. But if I look at your face, I'm not looking at the camera. So to you, the illusion is... I'm not looking at you, but the warmth of our connection, and it takes a lot of willpower to look at the camera. And I'm doing this to honor you as a human being. So you feel connected to, even though I feel a slight disconnection. Thoughts on that? I just, I think there's no safe answer to that. I think I look at your face on screen. And if I've got something important to say, I stare down the barrel of the camera, but mostly I'm looking at you. No, it's human need it's like what we're drawn to have you ever heard of eye tracking uh glasses they're coming aren't they they're the future thing i don't really know what they are so let's go back to sales and meetings and being present so my theory is and you know what do i know that's why we have you here is that when i step into my body not just physically but i know who i am these are my fears these are things that turn me on these are the things that interest me and i truly have a sense of that I can come to a meeting and be fully present as opposed to when I'm like, what do they want to hear? And how should I be? And should I be dressed in a suit? And should I do this? Uh, you're nodding your head. Do you agree with me? Are you just doing that? I mean, all that nonsense gets in the way. But when I can attend to you and I can breathe and because I calm down, you can't help but kind of get centered as well, even though you're not doing any of those things. By me being present, it's contagious, right? Oh, yeah. State is contagious for sure. And I, I love what you're saying about letting go of the baggage, the narrative that gets in the way of that connection. And, and what actors also say is that the question, how can I help, enhances that state of presence because it takes us into this purpose state. We're very good as humans at serving, at contributing. It's what we're wired to do. And if you go into that meeting and you think and you're centered and present and all the good stuff we've talked about and you're glowing with how can I help, why would they say no to you? You just it, it, it's what we want as humans, someone who is in service, who is contributing. Absolutely. And people listening to this right now, I'm going to give you uh, an example that might be a slight example to this, but it aligns perfectly. Caroline, have you ever gone to a restaurant where the hostess or host greets you and seats you on the table and they say beautiful things? And as they leave you and your significant other, you kind of go, they didn't mean a single word of that. And then you go yes. another time and somebody comes in and they say the exact same words and you feel like you've been welcomed into their home. So dear listeners listening to this, when you go into that helpful thing, I'm going to glow helpfulness as a facade. Don't do that. Really no. in your heart go how can I serve this human being? And the best way I can serve them is to attend to them and listen to them. And oh, by the way, this is the solution we have for you is a great way to build connection and build your business. Absolutely. And the, the, the pain point that I hear so often from salespeople is that they're so nervous that the first thing they do is open their laptop and start the presentation. And that's, the equivalent of the waiter throwing the menu at you and starting to talk it through without finding out about you and, and finding out what you like and what's your favorite wine and have you been here before? And, and I think there's something about catching ourselves and just put the brakes on, breathe, see them and ask the question, you know, ask the question that opens up what they want. And then we're not in a performance anymore we're in service and that and it's just give yourself a moment of pause before you rattle off with the presentation that you prepared because the presentation you prepared is not going to win you the pitch you're going to win the pitch your your sense of service your presence your openness your humanity frankly yeah and uh you'd mentioned that you've got a daughter how old is your daughter by the way i have a nearly six-year-old and an 11 year old so let's go with a six-year-old you could stupidly one day, offer 27 things that she does not want. And she will let you know immediately, mom, I don't want any of those things. And if you asked her, sweetheart, what would you like? And if you offer that, she's going to go, ta-da. And it's common sense when we're talking about our kids or other kids. But when we go into a sales meeting, finding out what's happening for the person you are attending in that meeting, 
what are their pain points? What are their concerns? What's getting in the way of them being fully functional and successful? Then we can say, oh, we got something that can help that rather than go out, like you said, the presentation. My favorite slide in all presentations is, hi, this is a picture of our building. <laughs> really? Oh my God, I want to hire you immediately. That's such a, a gorgeous building. It's funny, isn't it? Because we know this is a deep level. We know that we don't like someone talking at us. But I think there's something so frightening about the concept of presenting that people need a crutch and the deck, the presentation becomes a crutch, but it's just the belief that you are enough, that you listening, being centered, being in service is much more valuable than that lovely flashy deck with a nice picture of your building. It, the, and it's, it's the belief, the mindset that says, I am the person that can serve here, not this beautifully graphic design presentation. Just got this brilliant, uh, stu actually stupid notion going in and then showing your building, but it's actually Stonehenge. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. Show the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> All and you'll tell be, That would be just a pattern lies, and they know. I wonder if it would kind of warm up the media. So you're really finding out if they're paying attention there, aren't you? Absolutely. So one of the scary things is being ourselves for a lot of people. So any advice on, like, I'll give you a good example. It's a uh, you can have someone that's, uh, here's the story. I went to a wedding, you know, pre-COVID and it was a Catholic wedding, 300 people in the church, me included. And the priest comes up to, he says, by the way, I just graduated from seminary school. The priest that was supposed to be here couldn't make it. So I'm doing it. This is my first wedding. I'm super nervous today. Oh, bless him. And so of course, everybody in the audience fell in love with him. And he could have kept that hidden and he did a good yes. job and he would have done a good job and no one would have noticed, but because he opened up and revealed what was going on for him, that was an extra special event for the bride, the groom and people in attendance. And all of a sudden we saw, wow, he did such an amazing job. So being transparent is not weakness. No. It's actually strength. And if you can do that with the right intention, and I think that's the word that's one of my favorite words is intent. What is my intent in this so presentation? Much. If this is my intent is to hoodwink someone into buying my stuff or uh, you know push them into it, people can sense it, even though my oh, yeah. might be kind and loving. But if my intent is I want to make sure that Caroline is heard. I want to make sure that I understand exactly what's going on. And if there's a solution to be had, I'm going to help her get it. If that is the intention, the other person can feel it. And if it's not, they may not know what it is, but they get a sensation that something's not right. And if someone gets a, this is not right, the answer is always no. We read it and where we read it is in gaze and in voice. Yep. Because when someone's very focused on their own self-serving aims, they get predatorized, they get, they get a kind of tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. And when someone's in service, they tend to have more open peripheral vision. They're reading the room differently. Now, our voice, if I'm in tunnel vision, predatorized, my voice is tighter and flatter. It's almost fight or flight. Yes. If I'm in peripheral open vision and a sense of service, my voice much more naturally modulates to the other person. Now, you can teach people to do vocal rapport, but it ain't half as powerful as someone being in presence. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you can actually be out of rapport if you're in presence and you're fully present. You know what will yes. happen? What will happen is because the other person can sense it, they will join you, not even realizing that they're actually mirroring you, which is like a beautiful thing is I have always believed, not always, but since an adult, that communications is 100% my responsibility. And if I happen to be talking to Caroline and she felt the same way, it'd be a magical conversation. If we think it's a 50-50 thing, then we got it wrong. Yes, because we're always we're always responsible for our own communication, aren't we? We're, and we're always, it's like hosting a party. We're, we're always responsible for how people feel around us. And it's just taking that responsibility. And I'll give you an example of that. If you came to my house when I was a bachelor, Caroline, my house is your house. And my when I got married, my wife said, no, that is not <laughs> Caroline is a guest and it's our job to make her feel special and go out of her way. And what I was really doing was being lazy. If you want a beer, go in the fridge. And I thought that was being like welcoming. And she was like, no, 
If somebody comes to your house, it's your job to make sure they're cared for and loved. And if you don't do that, you're not doing it right. And then I was like, oh my God, I had uh, fooled myself into thinking I was really being effective and connected when I was not. And I think that's what we need to do is when we go into a meeting, there's been times when, you know, people are going into negotiations that are really powerful. And sometimes with American Indian tribes, that they've trained some of the tribes people to just breathe. Yeah. Everybody on this side of the table starts breathing in sync and harmony. And then before long, the other side does the same thing. And it kind of gels everybody together, even though the other side's uh, we're going to win. We're going to do this. And so you have a lot of power if you've got the right intent. And I, and I think when you add an awareness to breath, then you kind of get a little bit ninja. Because if you understand how breaths can slow down your heart rate, a long out breath is the simplest way to slow your heart rate and get you into good heart rate variability. When you're in good heart rate variability, you're in the parasympathetic nervous system, which is where we connect. Absolutely. Do you know it's where, the, oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, you were about to say? It's the savviest thing you can do is slow your out breath. So the Indians were onto it big time. So dear listeners, you may not uh, see this, obviously. I'm shaking my head. Caroline, do you know where this comes from? This no symbol that we have? I do not know, no. It comes from babies because babies can't control anything. But when their mothers were breastfeeding them, when they're full, they're like, nope, don't need the nipple. Oh, wow. So the reason I mention that is, you know, you may have had the stupid notion that you control your children even when they were babies. And the answer is, no, you do not. I don't think I had that notion. <laughs> oh, that's being smart. So when I'm working with clients, so one of the things I really uh, teach them is the only thing in the entire world you can control is your breathing. Yes. Amen. I mean, even though kids can stop breathing and turn blue, they don't do that anymore. They used to a long time ago to get, I'm going to hold my breath till you give me what I want kind of thing. But when we're in panic mode, if we can just even hold your breath for a moment to say, okay, I control something. And just that one little millimeter of control gives you the opportunity to think I can get more control back and stop this panic attack. So breath is incredibly important, is vital to our survival. You can go without food for weeks. You can go uh, without water for days, maybe a couple of weeks, but without breathing, baby, it's two to five minutes. And as soon as I hold my breath, I want to take the next breath. So Caroline, this has been a joy chatting with you and we need to go deeper. And by the way, I hate you because you've done a TED talk. I've not. It's on my bucket list. Do your TED talk. Yeah. I've applied many times, but apparently they have standards, but I didn't know that. Be a coach. So for anybody listening who wants to do a TED talk, I was a speaker coach for a TED, um, for Brixton TEDx. And I'd coached two years running. And then they said, you want to do a talk. So as you know, well, in sales, it's all about the relationships. Absolutely. So volunteer, volunteer. Caroline, before we go, I've got two questions for you. Number one, what makes you happy? Love makes me happy. It also makes me unhappy, but the, the love of the people I care about really nice. makes me happy. Brilliant. And what's one tip you could give our listeners, a mind hack that you use to become better, stronger, faster, sexier, whatever. What's the one thing you'd like to share? Emotion is just atoms moving around, right? Stress, it, you can tell yourself a story about it, but it's just your atoms moving around in a specific way. If you can clock the movement of the atoms and give it a silly name. I love it. Mr. Squishy or whatever, you feel like naming it in the moment, you name it and you reframe it and it moves on. Just so you know, Mr. Squishy sounds like a child predator, but. <laughs> oh no, I've got a, movie, a horror movie in my mind now. So let's call it, I don't know, something else. <laughs> oh, and I got it. It's a perfectly fine name. Thank you so much for being on the program. Really enjoyed it. And we should do this again because I think there's more ground to cover. Let's dig. We could dig into finding your voice as well because that's a very rich theme to explore for sales. Love it. Perfect. Oh, and one thing to say before we go is that we've just finalized a new course called Master Your Meetings, which is all about i created it for salespeople, Love it. and it takes people through mindset 
it takes people through confidence, breath and body. It takes people through voice, harnessing your voice, speaking slowly, pause, pace, cutting fillers. And then it takes them into impact, which is balancing strength and warmth and really starting meetings strong. So if anybody would like it, just drop me an email and we'll send you a beta test, which is 10 percent. And we're going to put a link in the show notes. All your social media stuff is linked to that program. So, dear listener, go in the show notes. You'll find all the links there. Thank you so much. Cheers. If you enjoyed this episode, please go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. And if you're looking for more tools, go to my website at nolimitselling.com. I've got a free mind training course there that's going to teach you some insights from the world of neuro-linguistic programming, and that is the fastest way to get better results. 